You might be aware that Apple just had a big old event where Tim Cook and Pals showcased, amongst other things, a brand new iPad Pro. Here are three reasons why I think you should consider picking one up. Yes, you read that right, the price. And look, I know what you're thinking. Yes, if you were to opt for the 12.9-inch Wi-Fi and cellular model and max out the amount of storage on offer, it would cost you a colon quivering £2,149. That works out to around US dollars and to around US$12,000. Sorry, Pete. At the other end of the scale, though, I think you're getting far better value for money. The base 11-inch 2021 iPad Pro costs exactly the same as last year's, despite having a number of really big improvements. For the same £750 or $799 that you would have spent on the 2020 11-inch iPad Pro a few days ago, you get an updated super-fast Thunderbolt connection. Nice. The hugely powerful M1 chip. Amazing. And an updated camera system. Meh. The price-to-performance ratio here reminds me a lot of the entry-level Mac Mini that was released last year. Here's this 700-quid entry-level Mac that can do insane things like run 1,000 plugins in Logic Pro simultaneously and allow you to edit 4K footage in real time. And although we haven't seen these base model iPads in action yet, I'm so confident that this will be a similar story that this is the model that I plan to get myself. Apple have scrapped the USB-C ports found on the previous two generations of the iPad Pro and added Thunderbolt ports to these new models. Now, don't panic. This doesn't mean you're going to have to go out and buy all new peripherals all over again. USB-C and Thunderbolt connectors are physically identical from a plug-in perspective. Thunderbolt ports can essentially do everything a USB-C port can with the same connections, only faster. The USB-C port on the iPad Pro 2020, the 2018 Pro, and the iPad Air 4 can transfer data at up to 10 gigabits per second. The Thunderbolt port on the 2021 iPad Pro can transfer data at up to 40 gigabits per second. A pretty big increase. This increase in speed means you can do things like utilize super fast external storage, transfer massive raw video files from that Thunderbolt storage in seconds, and output to high resolution displays. In fact, Apple were keen to let you know that you can actually connect your new iPad Pro to the Pro Display XDR at full 6K resolution. So if you happen to have one of those things lying around, you can totally do that. How much? Now, all of that is a really nice upgrade, but I'm more excited with what this Thunderbolt port might allow us to do in the future. LumaTouch, the company behind the fantastic iOS video editing app LumaFusion, tweeted this after Apple's event. External drive editing. Managing media on your iPad's limited storage is getting a whole lot easier. LumaFusion will soon take advantage of Thunderbolt 4's increased data transfer rate, allowing you to edit footage directly from an external drive without storing it on your iPad. Now, if LumaTouch planned to take advantage of the iPad Pro's Thunderbolt capability in this way, you can be damn sure that Apple will do the same. Imagine being able to store your GarageBand or other DAWs projects on an external drive, but being able to edit and tweak them from your iPad in real time. Sounds good to me.
Yes, the absolute maniacs at Apple have taken their in-house silicon that made last year's Mac Mini, MacBook Pro and MacBook Air entry-level powerhouses and slapped it into the new iPad Pros. With a 50% faster CPU performance than the 2020 iPad Pro's already incredible A12Z Bionic chip, an 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU and 16-core neural engine, the M1 is beastly. Apple are usually tight-lipped when it comes to the amount of RAM in their iOS devices. This year, though, they've came right out with it. Any iPad Pro model with 1TB or 2TB of storage will have 16 gigabits of RAM. The 512GB, 258GB and 128GB storage models will have 8GB of RAM. The 2020 iPad Pro had 6 gigabytes of RAM across all variations. So even the 8 gigabyte models are a big step up in terms of power and an even bigger step up if you plan to upgrade from an older Pro model, an Air model or a standard iPad. Bye bye optimizing performance. And the 1 terabyte and 2 terabyte models that come with 16 gigabytes of RAM, well, that's a whole lot of RAM. In fact, that's more RAM than you could ever hope to take advantage of currently on iPadOS. There are no apps that can use that much RAM, making the 16 gigabyte configuration of the 2021 iPad Pro kind of overkill, at least for now. All that extra untapped power kind of makes me wonder what's coming in the future. Those are the top three reasons that make me want to get my hands on the new 2021 iPad Pro and why you should seriously consider grabbing one as well. If you've been holding off from updating your older iPad Pro or you want to make the leap from a standard iPad model to the Pro line, then this is your time to dive in. If you have a 2020 iPad Pro or got yourself a 4th gen iPad Air last year, this is probably a tougher decision. And you may be better waiting to see just what Apple has in store for the extra power that they've packed into these new iPad models before making the leap. Let me know your thoughts on the 2021 iPad Pro in the comments below and click right here for more tasty GarageBand for iOS info. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.